Hello everyone, I'm Ryan the Cyber Hobbit, and it's time for another 1 6 scale statue unboxing. Today we have a brand new piece from Weta Workshop the first High King of Gondor, Elendil. I've been extremely excited about this piece ever since it was announced, as it's one of the most epic characters from the prologue of the Fellowship of the Ring. For many collectors, this piece has been highly anticipated as it marks the very first time that Elendil has been sculpted into a statue. As it was done with the classic series, this box comes with a panel that opens up to reveal a bit more information about the piece and how it was made. I'm glad to see this seems to have become Weta's new standard for 1-6 scale statues, and not just for the classic series. It's always great to find out more, and having a nice box makes the piece seem a bit more premium. He comes in three parts, the base, his body, and then his sword. And I'm happy to say the pegs and keys on his feet go into the base very easily. It's not the same story for his sword, as it does take a bit more effort, but eventually it does go in. And now let's take a look at the head sculpt. Wow. I think this may be one of the most accurate face sculpts from Weta ever. I know my lighting conditions are different, and some of his face is covered by his helmet, but this head sculpt is spectacular. All the details are there. The eye shape, the wrinkles under his eyes, the shape of the nose, the beard sculpt, even the paint application is great. This is Peter McKenzie. And also, check out this helmet. The weathering seems spot on with just the right amount of metal shine coming through. I really like the gold accents on certain parts. It's a really neat design for a helmet to begin with, but this recreation looks wonderful. This makes me really wish I owned the full-size United Cutlery version. And all the same can pretty much be said for the rest of his armor. Tons of tiny little sculpted details with a generous amount of weathering. Tons of tiny little blemishes and scratches here and there that show he's been in the middle of a huge battle. And again, what I think really sells this as the king's armor is all the gold accenting. It's such a well-designed and thought-out cuirass. His red clothing underneath also looks pretty good, and when mixed with the gold, it really gives off a royalty vibe. His chainmail underneath is sculpted well and has a nice mixture of a silver and gold paint application. And, as it should be, his fan braces and gauntlets have a much higher amount of scratches and dents from killing all sorts of creatures. So when this was initially announced, there were some complaints that the blade of his sword didn't seem to line up correctly with the hilt. And while I do think this looks a bit better than some of those initial photos, it does seem that the issue still remains. I've pushed the blade in as far as it can go and even tried turning it around, but the issue doesn't go away. It's not extremely noticeable, but it is there. Speaking of his sword, Narsil looks pretty nice. There seems to be a dark colored for lack of a better word, liquid that has been applied pretty much all over his sword and armor. Admittedly, when I first saw this, I wasn't the biggest fan, but as I continued to review this, it started to grow on me. I don't know if this is supposed to represent some type of black colored blood, or maybe it's just a muddy type of grime from the battlefield. It does appear in the films, so I guess it is accurate. And then we can't forget his scabbard. It's attached to his leather painted belt with some little silver rings. Not a lot to it, but it looks good. Continuing down are his thigh guards that have more of that detailed pattern and then more of that black splattered paint. I really like how the Gondorian wing design is integrated throughout his armor. His 
Sticking out under his red leather, as well as between his legs, is more of that shiny chainmail. I'm not sure how exactly you'd go about sculpting this, but it looks perfect. His shin and knee guards look well done. More cracks and blemishes to help sell the duration of the time he's spent in battle. Again, the wing design front and center, as well as more gold accents. A nice leather paint job on his shoes, and just a bit of dirt for some weathering. And now let's talk about this glorious cape that's attached to his back. This is awesome. I love the painted wings that stick out under his shoulder pauldrons. And take a look at the texture of the cape itself. How exactly is something like this hand sculpted? Maybe it's not, but from my understanding, Weta does hand sculpting for these types of things. Perhaps this part could have been digital? I'm not sure. And again, one of my favorite things about statues, the flow. This captures movement in a still object. It's great. A generous amount of weathering applied towards the bottom. Nice and dirty as it's been dragging along the battlefield. And a statue wouldn't be complete without the base. And this one looks great. He stands tall on some pieces of rocks that have many visible layers to them. The paint job is pretty good and looks real and natural. And this is all on top of the typical black Weta style base that has the map of Middle Earth. And on the underside, there is the edition number, as well as the signature and name of the sculptor, Fabio Paiva. Great work, Fabio. I ended up doing a bit of research on Fabio and found his art station page where it says that he's a digital sculptor. So perhaps that explains the texture of his cape and chainmail. Final thoughts. This statue is a masterpiece. It has a very powerful and epic pose that completely captures Elendil as he appeared on screen. The face sculpt is excellent and in my opinion probably the best Weta has ever put out. His armor and clothing look great and are painted exceptionally well. A fair amount of weathering and grime cover him that really show he's in the thick of battle. And if you didn't know, this is a companion piece that can be paired with the 1-6 scale Sauron that Weta recently made. He's stepping up on a rock base and meant to be looking up at Sauron as he towers over Elendil. I don't know what more you could want from a statue. This has it all. This is instantly my new favorite 1-6 scale statue. I think the only thing I can fault is the slight misalignment of the sword blade to the hilt, but everything else is flawless. I give this a 9.8 out of 10. Bravo, what a workshop. If you enjoyed this video and like what I'm doing here, hit that like button and consider subscribing. Until next time, bye bye.